Hey everybody, uh, my name is Gustav Reitstedt. I'm uh, here to talk about frame busting today. Pretty exciting stuff. Hope you guys not too tired just before lunch like this. Um, I'm, uh, I'm currently a student at Stanford University uh, and I'm with the web security lab there and they, they sort of just tell me what to do and I, I do it and this time they told me to look into frame busting. Uh, weak reference there, but this is joint work with uh, Ellie Burstein, Dan Bonet, and Colin Jackson. Uh, Colin is at Carnegie Mellon. Um, so just, I just wanted to get a, a show of hands. Who knows what frame busting is here? Um, yeah, I'm guessing a lot of people here do, but um, I'm just going to show you quickly what it is. So the idea is that you're framing someone in an iframe that doesn't want to be framed. So this is Google in my iframe. They do not want to be framed, right? Because there, there are some issues. You, for those who were in the talk right there, they, you know that there are some issues with being framed, but I'll cover some of them really quickly. Frame busting are techniques to get out of a frame. So I'm Google right here, and I don't like that some bad guy, Gustav, is trying to frame me. So I jump out of my frame, and I get to be top context of the browser. That's what frame busting is. It's pretty simple. Uh, we'll look at code. This is what a pretty normal frame busting code looks like. Uh, it, it's a conditional statement and a counteraction. Uh, we check if we are top. If we're not top, we want to become top. And there are several ways of doing this. This is a pretty common little snippet that does it. Um, so why do we want to frame bust? Um, there are, are several reasons. Probably the primary reason is click jacking. Uh, it was um, this cool attack. Uh, by Jeremiah and, and Arsnake uh, back in 2008, and it showed that you can actually, you can take this cool looking game right here, right? That's my, I'm controlling this game page right here. And here, this is a transparent iframe that I put on top. And then when someone actually clicks the play button, they're not clicking on the play button, they're clicking through the transparent iframe into it says something, I don't know, it says, okay, fine, deactivate my account for Twitter. So you went on this page and there's this cool little game and I'm thinking, oh, I'm gonna pl uh, play this cool game someone sent me, but you're actually de deactivating your session-based Twitter account. Uh, and um, just recently, Paul Stone at Black Hat came up with this other idea that you can actually utilize drag and drop to extract and plant uh, data into this frame page. And this is, I, I think we are seeing the beginning of this. Uh, you can get the source code of, uh, of a frame page. You can get um, CSRF tokens. Um, all kind of leakage can happen. And it also, um, it, was, it was covered in there uh, just, just briefly, but you can actually use these uh, URL fragment identifiers to do some pretty severe leaking uh, based on how much your page scrolls. And you can actually, you can read, the, you can dynamically read how much, you, how much the page scrolls and then infer some information from that. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna cover a ton of it, but you'll see some examples. So our survey idea was we look at Alexa Top 500 and all US banks <laughs> will grab all their frame busting code. We'll look and see, is it safe? Is there some sort of standard practice that people use? Uh, and um, can we improve on it? We use this uh, semi-automated tool based on HTML unit. It's, uh, it's a JavaScript emulator. Uh, it wasn't that helpful, so actually a lot of manual work. Uh, the, the biggest reason being that a lot of pages out there look like this. Uh, it's kind of a nightmare trying to find frame busting code in there and then they have all these packing things that structured things very strangely and uh, it took some work but uh, it took about a week and we found all the frame busting code of the top 500 sites and these, these are the results. Top 10, six, six out of top 10 pages use frame busting, 37% out of um, top 100 and 14% of the five, top 500 sites. Um, and, and this, we sort of, is, we were guessing that it was low. 14% could be considered low. Um, but what was sort of more frightening was the lack of a sort of standard of doing this. 
Uh, you think that they, they've sort of, these are the top sites of the internet, they know what, you know, how to do this, but they don't. Um, these are sort of the conditional statements that we saw. Um, lots of different variants, and uh, the counteractions were even worse. Uh, lots of different things, most of them broken. Um, there's this uh, sort of a frightening to see that, that nobody really knows what to do. And I, I don't really recommend doing this top 500 site crawling thing. It's sort of traumatizing and deeply scarring inside. You visit lots of pages you would never want to visit, lots of languages that you don't understand. And uh, if you're a security sav savvy person, it's even more traumatizing. But um, I figured we'd go through some of the, uh, some of the things. Uh, that we found, and uh, sadly enough, all the frame busting code we found on the top 500 sites were all broken in many different ways in several browsers. Um, the best one uh, was actually Twitter. I'll show you how to break that. Um, well, first we'll check out some site-specific, poorly written frame busting code. And this is um, sort of, um, We'll make it a game. You guys can look at it and tell me how to break it, and you get like an extra cookie at lunch or something. Uh, so this is this is courtesy of Walmart. They do uh, if top dot location is not equal to the location, and then they check for the refer, and they do document dot refer index of Walmart dot com equal to negative one. So they do some substring search. What's terribly broken about this? Just shout it out. Who? What? Yes, there's several ways of getting walmart.com into your uh, URL that you're, you're framing from, so this is very, very broken. Let's move on. New York Times, um, they have this cute little uh, regular expression that they uh, use dot .match with. Um, any regular expression gurus that can see what's up with this code? It's not anchor at the beginning. You get, like, lots of cookies. Um, so... <laughs> We just put it in the URL parameter, HTTPS, New York Times, and we can, we can frame New York Times. You have all your news in a frame or something. Cute. Uh, US Bank, they uh, actually, this is only a very small uh, snippet of their code. Their whole entire frame busting code is something like 200 lines of code. It's very advanced and doesn't do very much. Uh, they do this get domain that's their own function, and they, they, they pull out the, the domain of the, um, the refer, and then they do this search with uh, this regular expression. What is, what is wrong with this? It's going to go on. So, U.S. Bank do not own all subdomains in the world, unfortunately. So, you can just have usbank.attacker.com, or Perhaps they have some sort of strategic relationship with the Norwegian State House Bank, husbanken.no. I don't know. Or rusbank.org, possibly. Uh, I don't know why they have this code. It's not very safe. And they, have, they, they threaten you in all kinds of ways that they will contact your ISP when you frame them. And I got lots of threatening emails. But um, I don't know. It's terrible. Uh, this is uh, MySpace. They have this uh, very uh, nice little uh, refer match with, uh, they, they want to uh, allow lots of sites. Um, I've highlighted the one that's interesting, which is uh, Google's image results site. So they allow image results to uh, frame their, their profiles. So why is this a problem? So what, what does image results look like? I'm sure you've all seen them. They're pretty much framed pages, right? The problem is Google's image results do not frame bust. So we can actually just make a very, we can craft a, a specific URL and get a very specific profile, and then we just frame Google images, and we're in the clear. So. Um, just a word about refer. Refer is kind of funky stuff. There's been many, many attacks on the refer um, attribute uh, because of um, affiliate scamming and so on. Um, you can also do some open redirect refer changing, uh, HTTPS to HTTP washing. Uh, some people don't know about that. Uh, and obviously, it can get hard with regular expressions. 
uh, as we saw, and your friends cannot be trusted. And another thing is that um, uh, some sites do not know, they, they sort of assume that the refer header is always there. This is a very bad assumption, it should not be made. Um, Refers are often stripped by proxies or they're stripped by something like the HTTPS, the HTTP washing. Uh, so if you're gonna use the refer, do it with, uh, with caution and, and sort of know the implications of it. So this is Facebook's dark layer uh, defense. This is the, the click shacking defense that they deployed in, um, I think it was March or something. Um, I used to think this was a pretty cute idea. I don't anymore. Um, they, what they do is when they notice that they are a, in a framed context, they put this huge black transparent layer over the entire page. So any clicks that you try to, try to make that go straight into Facebook's page, they will go into their, their div and they will just die off. And actually when you click it, they will try to frame bust. So we'll look at their code. This is what their code looks like. Um, you don't really ignore the stuff on top. They do this, uh, they put this big, big div. It's 9,999 pixels wide and the height is the same, I think, yeah. And they have the Z index of some million and one. Um, now what's wrong with this? Any idea? So, is 9,999 9, the biggest div you can ever make in HTML? No, it's not. You can make it bigger. So, you just make it an iframe that's three times as big, and the bad thing about I, Facebook's contents is that it's floating. So it just floats out of the view, and it gets sort of, it just gets out of the, gets out of this big, div that they put on there. And we actually told them about this and, and several other attacks. And the night after I first presented this, um, they were hit by some Czech guy that, um, I don't know, I think it was 800,000 accounts or something were hit by this particular attack. And then from there, there's been sort of an escalation of like jacking and whatever it is, boob jacking, I don't know, all kind of crazy stuff that, that Facebook is under attack right now. So it's a severe problem that they're dealing with. Now they, they fixed this problem, but there's still, there's still a lot of issues here. For example, the, the big black div um, still renders all the session-based content. So your scroll bars will actually expand as much as your, your profile page allows. So you can do all the fragment, uh, fragment identifier based attacks and all the, the frame leakage attacks still. This does not stop that. That's why I think this is not a very good idea. So I can figure out if you're logged in, I can figure out who you are on Facebook, I can figure out who your friends are. Um, and they do not stop it. So let's check out some of our generic browser weaponry for, for, frame, for attacking frame busting. So this is a code used by a lot of people. If top dot location not equals self dot location, then parent dot location equals self dot location. Um, any clues why this is a bad idea? Someone said one. Right. So what would happen if there are several? Would they would they go up? If if, if I have three iframes on top of each other and this is the bottom one, would it recursively walk up? No, it wouldn't. Maybe that's what they're thinking, what would happen. That's unfortunately not the case. So if you enclose this in two frames, you're actually battling the descent policy that was, um, um, it, it's in all browsers now, I think. Um, it, it was proposed by Adam Barth, Colin uh, Jackson, and John Mitchell uh, back in 2009. And um, it, it, it's um, part of what makes your uh, pop-up blocker work and also some very funky frame navigation stuff that we don't want to allow. So top.location equals self.location is just an allowed special case in this descendant policy. So you can actually not navigate your parent if it's not the top. Um, so people who write this kind of code, is they, they just don't, either they didn't know or 